Oh, somebody wants me to check out the design. Awesome, let's check it out. <laughs> okay, yeah, dude, funny, funny. That was really funny. <clears throat> oh, another person wants me to check out the design. All right, yeah. What is going on? Drop shadows. They deserve care. They deserve to be caressed like this. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna help you master the drop shadow. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, so for the very first rule, I'm going to give you that as students of myself, your pupils, that I want you to obey is don't add drop shadows to text. This, of course, looks horrible. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Gary, you know, maybe that's just too much contrast. Maybe we just need to take the shadow opacity down. And yeah, that does look better, but what purpose does it really serve? Um, I've seen people do things like this and really it just doesn't help. It's really just screws up the accessibility, the readability of the type. And so pretty much I'm going to put this out there. I mean, if you have to say, for instance, you're dealing with a horrible client and they want shadows, they want drop shadows on their text. If you're in that situation and you've done all you can to convince them that that is a horrible approach. I uh, then make sure that your your uh, alpha is below around 10%. And of course, you have to even go lower the less the blur ratio is. Because right here we can see uh, if we come up here maybe to say like 16%, that's that's a shadow that's really contrasting a lot. It's going to make it hard to read the type. Um, for instance, if we change the blur ratio up to this, now it becomes a lot easier to read. So. The less blur that you have, the less contrast that you should have as well, or the lower the opacity mark, all right? Either way though, I'm gonna say, don't add drop shadows to your text. Um, one thing that we used to see back around you know, the Web 2.0 era or so, uh, are these real small type of uh, shadows, like they're like a sort of like an emboss effect or whatever. Um, some people would even do this and have their embossed text. Don't do that either, just because that's a very dated thing to do. Um, so if you want to try to look like you actually have modern design skill, stay away from that. Please, please, please. All right, next up, I'm gonna give you another rule. Rule number two, if you have an element that you wanna add a drop shadow to, ask yourself, how much does it contrast with the background? So in this case, the background is white. And by the way, we're gonna have different backgrounds in the other artboards. But for now, it's white. And this right here, this element, we'll say we want to add a, a drop shadow to it. This one is very light blue. So the contrast is low. There's not a lot of contrast between these elements. It's not like this element, I, uh, you know, is this much contrast, right? So if you have a situation like this, don't ever put a drop shadow on in any case. I, I don't care how you try to adjust it. It's not going to look good. In fact, I'll show you. So. Let's just do a few of these here. We'll take our shadow and we turn them on. By default, the, the default shadow that we have here, it looks like crap, right? Now, what if we try to lower the uh, the blur ratio, okay? Okay, it still doesn't look good. What if we try to drop down the opacity? It, it looks horrible. You're probably wondering why is that the case? Well, it's because when you have two elements that don't contrast much with each other, 
and you're throwing in another element that doesn't have a lot of contrast, you're blurring the container. It's kind of hard to tell where it goes. There's not enough contrast, so it just looks like crap. That's why when we turn it off, it looks much better. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, but Gary, why don't we just really increase the contrast of the shadow itself? In which case, I will do that for you and show exactly why you're wrong. So yes, this does contrast a lot, right? We can clearly see the container. Um, outside of just looking really, really bad, in terms of UX, what do you think people want to focus on the most? You know, I mean, they, they want to read, the eye should be, the, the, the focus of the eye should be the text and the icon, not your stupid shadow. For instance, have you ever heard, of, heard the term, he was lurking in the shadows, right? Well, you don't see him because a shadow is something that you really don't see. You want your shadows to be low opacity, something that's more of an afterthought. So in this case, this is a no-go, don't add a shadow. Next up, what if we have containers here, but they're the exact same color as the background. This is actually a good potential use case of shadows. And this is something that I've seen in sort of a kind of like a modern design trend in the past couple years. So let's get our shadow on. Now, of course, this right here, the shadow is way too much of an uh, of the focus or right? it needs to come down quite more. So we'll take our shadow. Now, again, this is like up to 51% at all the way black for the shadow. Like I said, there's uh, there's kind of like a 10% rule. I'm gonna call it the 10% rule. You wanna make sure that your shadows are exceed no more than 10% of the opacity, assuming it's a black shadow. Of course, we're gonna get into colored shadows as well in the shortly, but for black shadows, you don't really wanna go more than 10% or so, and then you're left with this, which is kind of an interesting aesthetic. It's almost kind of like the whole trendy new morphism, that thing that's going on because there's not a lot of attention that's drawn to the container or the button or whatever you're placing it on, uh, but that's okay because we see the content inside of it is high contrasting and that's what they're there for. So in this case, it's perfectly fine. Let's say for instance, you wanna have a shadow uh, and you want, you want it to be not a soft shadow, but a hard shadow. So the, a hard shadow would be one with the blur radius uh, where it's really low. So uh, this is a high blur radius. We take it all the way down here. Um, yeah, you could do that. Um, in this case, it's a little bit funky. It's a little bit too exaggerated in my opinion. So uh, if you're gonna have a hard shadow, generally speaking, I would take your X and Y values and kind of just bring them in kind of like that so that they don't really take up too much space in the sense. So I would say for another roll, and of course these could be bent a little bit, I, you know, the harder the shadow, the more it should be brought in towards the container, whether it be a card like this or a button. Next up, what if, get rid of that, what if we have maybe a slightly colored background? How do shadows work in this context? So if I take this and we'll turn our shadow on, again, it's pretty much the same situation, but there is some uh, one consideration that you need to make. So right now, this shadow, if we take a look at the opacity, it's up there pretty high. Probably want it to come down, you know, no more than 12, 13, maybe 10%. And it just, there's something off about it. If we get in there real close, it it's, it's gray. It's like mixing gray in this light blue, which is just absolute crap color combination. So what you would wanna do is match it up with the hue of the background, the color that I'm talking about basically of the uh, shadow. So right now we're all black, but if we get into roughly around the same hue, push this into that section, and then maybe we'll push this up. Maybe you can make it a little bit darker. Now it looks a lot better, functions a lot better than it did with the all black version because this it, it just created a grayscale in there uh, between the shadow itself and the background. So that looks actually pretty decent. Next up, so let's say for instance, you wanted to have a colored shadow. Now you're getting into pro level territory and a little bit risky. Let's try it anyhow, a colored shadow. How the hell would that even work? Well, we'll take our colored shadow here. Um, let's do same, you know, around the same area. We'll get into this blue or so. And again, the same ideas 
ultimately apply, around, around, right around 8%. You want it to be very soft, especially when it comes to color. You push it up to like 10 or 11%, it's really starting to stick out quite a bit. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe around 8%, I would go, oh boy, that's finicky. And right around there looks good. Now, if you try to do a different color, you're gonna wanna try to use colors that are also in your user interface. Ideally, if you wanna be the safest as possible, stick with your primary color. In this case, it happens to be blue. If I had a secondary color, which many user interfaces do, I you could bring that in as well, but don't just start just randomly choosing colors that don't exist in other areas of your UI. For instance, like if we have this purple or something, you might wanna change up some of the other elements to match up that purple possibly. So we could take like this. Now this kind of makes a little bit more sense because you're drawing out colors that exist in other areas of the UI and you wanna be consistent. This still, in this context, I still kind of don't like that. Again, we wanna go back to more of like the blue and now it fits much, much better. And it does help frame the overall containers here, the card containers. Now, what about if you have a dark background? Can you add shadows to something that's already dark? Well, the answer is if you actually have this black, then no, you can't add shadows. Don't ever try to add any type of shadow because that would just defy the laws of light and anything else in science. I suck at science. Um, but you can see right here, we actually have kind of like a, a very dark gray background. So in this case, what happens when we, when we add, actually add a shadow? All right, so our shadow. I just toggled on the shadow. You can barely tell because we already have a dark background. So it's already at 7%. If we dial this all the way up, again, it, it's still the same rules. It, this is just drawing way too much attention to the shadow itself, and we don't want that. It needs to be the content that's inside the card or the button or the type or whatever it is. So again, you wanna draw it back down, you know, under 10, and it looks pretty solid right there. I would have no problem with this. Another rule I'm gonna give you though, is if you have like a dark background like this, don't, and, and it's, it's, it's desaturated, or in other words, there's no color in it. Don't add color, because there's not a single color that we can try to add here, oops, wrong one, that would actually look good in contrast well uh, with the design. So for instance, if we take this up, we start going through the wheel. Just look how disgusting that is. I mean, none of these are doing the design any justice. And that's because really it's it's situated between two elements that are completely I lack a devoid of color. So you add in a, a colored shadow, it just looks like garbage. I've seen people do this, unfortunately. Um, so if if you want a shadow, if you gotta have a shadow in there, again, run around 10% or less and you're good to go. You're not killing your design. What about a high contrasting background? How would that work? All right, well, let's see. Let's add another shadow. That looks nice already. Whatever I just did, that looks pretty good. Uh, it, it happens to be black and this is working well. It's 8%, uh, it's feathered pretty well. Again, you don't have to go the feathered route. I know I've been showing that a lot here. This could actually work. It's actually pretty far away and it still looks not too bad. You just wanna, you wouldn't want it to have a lot of contrast in this case, like bring it up. Then it becomes just too much in my opinion. Now, what about this type of example? Of course, we could go through a million of these. This is the last one, I promise you, uh, where we have the same color background, except this time it's not white and white like we had before. This is both blue. You know, let's try adding a shadow here. So now this kind of is taking on uh, half of the, the pneumorphic effect that everybody's been creaming about basically. Uh, it doesn't have the, the highlighted version over here, but still I would say this works because it's not the container that's the, the point, it's, it's the content inside of the container. People can clearly see each one of these elements and click on them and access them, read them and all of that. So really, if, again, if we check out the, the settings of this, We'll see that, again, it's at 8%. You go up much higher, just a, a tad bit too much in my opinion. They're at 20% there. So you wanted to go around quite low. Right around there looks to be a pretty good sweet spot. 
right, everybody, hopefully you were able to gain something from that if you suffered from bad drop shadowism or something in the past. Hopefully we could cure that so that, you know, you can make these designs that just don't suck. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you more. Goodbye.